Dear Meredith, when your husband is struggling with CPTSD, with an episode, a flashback is, is the language that we tend to use in our house, uh, or a phase of depression, which I did go through a pretty deep phase of depression during the COVID stuff, right? Mm -hmm. How do you support him? I'm asking for a loved one in my life who struggles with CPTSD and for married friends whose pastor, husbands, whose husband struggles with anxiety and or depression um, as, as well. So uh, Herman Sosa says depression is the special sin of the pastor. Hmm. And it, we're, we're, we're susceptible to it. And um, I do want to give my answer first. It's very hmm. short. Uh, what Meredith has done most and we are in an ongoing dance here okay so she's learned how to wait she's learned how to understand and she's learned how to see what i see that's what's helped me um, it doesn't make it all go away um, but that 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 helps me um, when you can see what i see even especially when i'm saying what i see i know is wrong but it's what I see to not be alone in, in, in admitting I'm wrong and how blinding CPTSD can be emotionally to you. Um, that's huge. And then waiting it out. You wait it out with me. Yeah. So yeah. It, tears for the pain. It's real. It's real. Um, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know that I can get through this without the tears. Um, it's been something that has been harder for me to talk about just because it is so real. Yeah. And it impacts so many people um, in so many different ways. So I don't, um, I don't want in any way people to think that because I experience it one way, they must as well, or that theirs is invalid. Mm -hmm. Um because as you have reminded me, it's complex. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that uh, what you said that helps you is an important starting place. Um, that has taken rearranging our schedule quite a bit. Uh, once we recognized that you were struggling more consistently with CPTSD, I... Um, became more aware of how much I was involved outside of the home and decided to change my focus. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that I don't go to the grocery store, but just making sure that my friendships with other women in the community don't take precedence over my being home for my husband if he is in a scenario where he needs my help. Um, and sometimes that's meant talking to them a little bit about it so that they understand. When I, So I don't have to explain in detail each time something comes up. I can just say, you know what? Jonathan's struggling today. I need to not. I need to cancel. Um, but that takes a really mature friend as well. So knowing that, knowing you're, the people that you talk to about it is really important um, because in our in our era, what I'm discovering is we have a lot of um, our society encourages us to divorce. It encourages us to seek happiness and personal fulfillment at all costs. And so if you bring a struggle in your relationship to somebody else, you're not necessarily going to get the support you need to stick it out and to stay um, and to wait. So making sure that when you talk to somebody, they're going to be the one that will lead you to stay is important. Um, or just don't talk to them about it. If you realize, whoops, that's not the right person, <laughs> then make sure that you don't talk to them about this the struggle. Um, it'd be really nice if I could like stop crying so I could talk straight, you know. <laughs> nah, nah, this is this is it's real, 
And um, to give you a moment to think on it, um, you know, part of what we want to be here <laughs> on Stop the White Noise is um, we want to be a example for those of you who are younger of marriage and Christian family and child rearing, which means we're not perfect and we're not going to pretend we are. We're not going to pretend there's not been pain. Uh, we're not going to pretend that we don't still have much to work on. Um, but what you're going to see is that we bear with each other. And that's what these tears are about, is from the bearing you have done. Right? Um, yeah, yeah, it's... It's um, real. It's really hard to learn about... I, I can't fathom some of the... Um, things that he speaks about having gone through like I can't imagine what that must feel like for a child because it's so far from what I grew up with um in some ways a lot of what I grew up with was the complete opposite uh and kind of falling off the horse on the other end so (laughs) but our struggle has become something that has illustrated in a very real way the vows that we took on our wedding day. Um, it, you're not always going to be healthy. And for us, it's emotional. Hmm. For some people, it's physical. And some people get both physical and emotional unhealth. And um, that's our sickness. You know, that's the vow that we made was in sickness and in health. Um, so... So that's why you stay, and that's why you wait. Recently, when you had a depression from COVID, there were times when there was nothing I could say that would help and not get a gruff, gruff response. response. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing that more and more, that little jinx thing. It was thing. rough. That was a rough time. Um, and so... I remember at one point, like, I couldn't even come close enough. And so I held his feet, and I just read the Psalter to him. I read um, the Psalms that the kids and I read because I knew that they would be full of hope. I read the Daughters of Wisdom Psalms, and I read some of the Sons of Solomon Psalms that I know just from praying them with our son at night. Um, but having experienced that, then when a friend came and said, my wife has COVID and is slipping into that place, I could say, I know what will help you both Mm -hmm. in this moment. Um, and so I was able to recommend the Psalter and scripture because In depression, it's not a matter of saying the right thing. It's being reminded of the truth or the foundation that you can stand on. Um, Because, goodness, I say the wrong thing all the time. And that's part of, I think, (laughs) what causes us the most trouble is that I try to come at it from my perspective sometimes. And that just causes more issue. But what you need is for your foundation to be brought back into focus. Yeah. Um, there's when a d- depression more than flashback, but the person who's depressed, they don't need anyone to fix the depression. And that's what so many words are usually trying to do. They're trying to make you not feel depressed. And what we just need is for people to be like, I love you anyway. I, I don't understand, but I, I see it. I can see it. And I know that this isn't what you choose. It's just what is right now. Um, and I can say, I mean, I remember that when you were reading the scripture. And I don't remember a ton about it, um, although I know I was exhausted, so I was going to sleep, right? Because, man, the fatigue was a real deal. Um, and um, I remember feeling, it feels like, as I think about it, you were, you were so far away and I, I couldn't get out of my emotions. They were just so on me, but I could hear this far off light 
and and none of the words themselves specifically um, changed anything in that moment. But I wasn't alone. And I wasn't alone not only because you were with me, but because Christ had sent you there. And the words, I knew that. And so um, it was a tremendous blessing to me in that time. Um, and, uh, but it didn't, it doesn't like take the depression away and here I am, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, no, it was still, it was like being in a cage, an emotional cage. And that's, that's the thing about the flashbacks too, is it is, it's like the, as soon as I figure out what's going on, which isn't always very fast, um, the flashback itself is like an emotional cage and I, I can see through the bars, mm -hmm. but I can't get out. And that's where then I just sit now and increasingly I just, I just sit and hold, right? Cause I, I used to talk. <laughs> and I was sit and hold and and try to find I mean one of the things that uh, Peter Walker's book um, does say that I think is helpful is what what you have lost emotionally is safety and so coming to believe you are safe again is the key goal I have in those moments mm -hmm. um, and it's amazing how many times I'll say in my in my heart you know um, uh, I am safe and then I'll hear no you're not and, and that's the emotion. Bro, 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 bro. Um, increasingly, uh, Jesus has a plan. Uh, Jesus is in charge. Uh, this is going to work out. Um, I, I, I've spoken about this somewhere else. Maybe it was just to you, but you know, reading this book, Shogun, which I can't recommend wholeheartedly, but I can recommend, you know, it rated R at least. Um, watching these pagans use the word karma to refer to well, whoever's in charge, whoever he might be is in charge and that's the way it's going to be and it's actually the way life is. You just have to accept it. Like, it shamed me. <laughs> it's like, well, I know who that is. I know it's for my good. They don't even have that and they're like, they, they were, at least it's a story, but they're so able to rely on it. Mm -hmm. It shamed me and so karma has come in my head not because of actual karma. I don't, I don't believe in the doctrines of karma, but it's a word that then triggers me to remember, oh, Jesus is reigning. So I am safe even if I don't feel safe. And that, again, that becomes the fight, but it's like you're in this cage. You're in this cage of your emotions. And what I've learned on my part, the discipline I'm enacting is to know I'm in a cage of emotions. Those emotions are not authentically representing what everyone else is seeing. And so I need to not let my body act on them until, um, until I can backpedal it out. Um, yeah. So um, physical touch has helped a lot. Oh, it's huge. Um, if I can, if I can hold his hand or hug him, um, that helps. Yeah. Um, and also recognizing how much pain he has and saying things like, that must be really painful. Um, s somehow it, it lowers that self-defense mechanism like he that's the scene what i see recognizes that he doesn't yeah. have to defend himself against me if i can yeah. give a me too statement like yeah. yeah i i get it yeah that's really sad yeah um and uh hmm that's good i think i lost the last one it just flitted out of my brain those are good though you've given a good good answer <laughs> 